Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at getting a Hello World Android app written in Kotlin running on an actual phone. And don't worry if you don't know Kotlin, I'm going to be explaining it a bit as I go along. I'm also, separate to this, planning to create two other courses. One's going to be on Kotlin for complete beginners, which is going to be free. And the other is going to be a course on Kotlin for Java developers, probably, which I'm going to ask a small amount of money for. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is download Android Studio, which is the recommended way to do Android programming. So if you just search for Android Studio, you can find a link to the website there or go directly to developer.android.com. Then we need to click the download link and agree to the terms and conditions and then we can go ahead and download it and install it. So of course the installation procedure looks a bit different on Windows than on Mac. I'm using a Mac but it's going to be pretty similar with Windows. It's a straightforward installation. So let's install this. On the Mac you install programs just by dragging them into the applications folder so I'm going to do that. Then we can start up Android Studio. I'm going to be bad and not send any usage statistics to Google. When it starts up, let's just click Next on the welcome screen, accept the standard options and click Next again. Got to accept the user agreement, click Finish. And then it's going to download stuff for a while and this might take quite a while so you have to be patient. So for me that only took a minute or so but it could be longer if you've got a slow internet connection. Once that's downloaded, you can click Finish and then click New Project to create a new project. Now Android Studio is finally installed. And in Android in general, the activity takes place in what we call activities. So one particular screen within a program could be its own self-contained activity, for example. So to get started, I'm going to select Empty Activity, which is the default anyway and that just puts a little bit of text on the screen on your phone. Then I'm going to click Next, and on this screen I'm going to accept all the defaults. Notice by default it's going to create a Kotlin project, and that's what I want in this case. Also, you can see that the SDK version of Android, the Software Development Kit of Android, is set by default to 24. And that's what I actually want. It tells me that my app will run on 97% of devices. If you select something really recent, even more recent, you're limiting the number of devices that your app can potentially run on. 97% I think is pretty good. So let's click Finish. And now we're going to have to wait a bit while it's unzipping some stuff. Click Finish on this screen. And now we have to wait more, and this might potentially be quite a long wait, because this is the first time that I've created a project in this Android Studio. So this might take a while to complete. You can see in the taskbar at the bottom, it says Gradle Building. And what we want to do is wait until there are no signs that anything is still happening. So we want to wait until everything's settled down and it looks like it's finished doing whatever it's doing. So actually on my computer that took about 12 minutes, but of course it could take longer. It just depends on your computer. The key to it is patience. Now we can click the little run button, sort of thing that looks like a green play button right at the top of the integrated development environment, the IDE. So we'll click that run button and then, again, we'll wait. And you can see it's now starting up a emulator. The actual emulator it's starting is this medium phone emulator that you can see in the kind of top toolbar or status bar there. Now the booting up of this emulator, that might also take a while because what this has got to do is it's got to basically boot up an Android system on your computer. And especially if you've got a bit of an old computer, which I do have, this could really take some time. Now you can see that after five minutes, it will say error running your emulator within five minutes. That's not necessarily anything to worry about. I would let this go for quite a long time and see if it does eventually boot up. 
So for me, that basically took an hour to boot up and I still can't see my program. I keep getting this system UI isn't responding message. And what I eventually figured out was that the best thing to do with that is apparently click close app. I don't know exactly what it's referring to, but we just need to make this message go away. You can try also waiting longer if you want. I find that after clicking it, the screen went black for a bit and then finally it ran my program. If you do run into some serious errors and it just doesn't work even after like an hour or two, there is a troubleshooting page that you can find by a quick internet search on the developer Android site. But now you can see finally it says, hello Android and the program's running. Now let's see if we can change this. You can see in the program, the text hello dollar name is actually there. And the name is coming from up here where it says name equals Android. Let's change the text from hello to hi. Where it says name equals Android, I'm also going to change that to name equals John, which is my name. And then run the program again by clicking that run button, which is now changed to a kind of refresh button. And this works, but you can see that it does take quite a while. So after a couple of minutes, you can see finally it says, hi, John, instead of hello, Android. Now, clearly, if you've got an old computer like me, this is a really slow process. So one thing we can do is enable live edit in Android Studio preferences, which we'll take a look at shortly. But let's first take a look at how we can run this program on an actual phone. So we're not yet going to create an installable app that we can actually install on the phone. But what I do want to do is run the app on my phone because what I found is that the quickest way to run and develop Android programs, at least if your computer is a bit old, is not to use an emulator, but to use an actual hardware device. So I've got a phone here with me. It's actually a Moto G22, but what we have to do to run programs on phones is pretty similar for every different kind of phone, more or less. Now, there are various ways to do this, but what I'm going to do, because I think it's probably the most reliable way, is I'm going to plug my phone into my computer via USB. So I'm plugging this in, and although it makes a noise indicating that I plugged it in, nothing much happens. We can actually look at the running devices that we've got available. If we go to the device manager, you can access that from this icon on the right in the right margin or you can go to tools device manager and we can see that we've got this medium phone emulator running but it doesn't show the phone that i've actually plugged in now what we have to do is enable the phone for debugging if you search for android studio usb debugging something like that you can find this page about running apps on a hardware device and you can see that you basically have to enable USB debugging in developer options. But we'll talk more about that in a second. On Mac OS, which is what I'm using, I don't have to do any additional configuration of my computer. But on Windows, you'll have to install a USB driver for ADB, the Android debugger, possibly. And we also see instructions here for Ubuntu. Now, if I search for developer options, in the system settings of my phone, I don't find anything. And that's because that has to be explicitly enabled on many phones. So what I really want here is enable developer mode, Moto G22, or whatever your phone happens to be. And in here, as with many phones, we have to go to system settings, about phone, and touch the build number field seven times. So I'm gonna do that right now, if I go to settings on my phone, about phone is right at the bottom. And if I scroll down to the bottom again, I can see the build number section. So I'm gonna to touch that seven times. And now it's telling me to re-enter my pin. And when I do that, there's some little text that says you are now a developer. I also tried this on a show me Poco phone and the procedure was basically the same, except it had something called mu build number, something like that. And I had to touch that seven times. Once you've switched your phone into developer mode, then you can search in the settings and you can find the developer options. So I'm going to developer options on my phone. 
and I'm going to enable USB debugging in there. It asks me if I want to always allow USB debugging from this computer and I'm going to click allow on that. There are lots of other options as well and you might want to scroll through and just take a look. But once I've done that, you can see my phone actually appears here in the device manager and we can now try to run our program on that and get it running on an actual phone. So let's make sure the phone that we want to run on is selected right at the top here and I'm going to click the run button and after a pause that actually took a couple of minutes I can actually see that program running on my phone however you can't see it so what I'm going to do is go to Android Studio preferences tools device mirroring and let's turn on active mirroring so I'm going to click all of these I think and then I'll click OK so I'm going to try unplugging and plugging this phone in again because that might help. Now it says connecting to the device and here's the program running on my actual phone. Now to speed things up a bit while we're developing applications, let's go to Android Studio Preferences. I'm going to go to Editor and here we've got Live Editing, Live Edit. And I'm going to make sure I've got Push Edits Automatically turned on and I'm going to click OK. Now let's change the text. So I'm going to, instead of saying, hi, John, which I've got at the moment, I'm going to say, hi, name, and just save that. Well, that doesn't seem to actually be working. Let's click this Run App button. OK, it reran the program in just a matter of seconds, but it would be nice to get that live edit working. And I'm going to try changing this back to hello. And this time it did work, and it was virtually instant. There was a little bit of a delay, but not too much. Let's go back to high again. Save it. And it's instant. Okay, so this is the fastest way to develop Android programs that I've been able to find. Connect an actual device, turn on live edit, and then the changes to your code appear more or less straight away, if it works anyway, in this screen here. You can also zoom in a bit if you want. So that's it for this video and until next time, happy coding.